Welcome to today's web series episode for JetTrack Fire Inspection for desktop and mobile devices. My name is Dean Weatherston. I'm one of the FileMaker developers who put this app together, and I hope to give you some basic insight into how it works and the recommended methods. Today's topic is test procedures and everything related to the typical steps a fire inspection technician would take in completing a test procedure. Right now, we're looking at the layout that we start from, typically in a, a tablet, which is our work order. And from here, I'm going to take you to uh, the area that we uh, deal with for test procedures. So up at the top, you would notice there's a, a few building IDs and uh, test procedures that need to be applied to them. So I'm going to click on the top option, uh, the red uh, arrow link takes us through to our test procedure layout. You can see a few details about the work order, uh, the building, and the actual procedure at the top left. And then uh, going across, there's a couple of columns with uh, different rows for different types of items. And uh, you can see the, the descriptions for each of them as you run down. And uh, it may be further than just one page. Um, just briefly talking about them, uh, the item number on the first um, column, the type of um, item that is, um, the description to the, to the right of that, and that's pretty useful. Uh, the reference number, which is uh, clickable as well, so if I click on that, if we had any, um, any uh, information, more information about that the reference number, it would show up here. And I'll just click on a different one, and you can see this one is showing us a bit more background and information about that particular reference number. I'll just click off it. All right, moving across, we've got uh, pass fail NA column, which is an area that the technician will um, have to go through all the way through for each item and make a change to see uh, or to verify if it's pass fail or NA status. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, to the right of that, we have comments, and you just click on that area. By default, it gives you an option to add a comment or just a yes or a no. Um, there are specific uh, line items that have uh, particular um, uh, types of data that need to be filled out, and that's normally in, in a gray uh, font. Uh, uh, indicating what type of uh, data is expected in that uh, comment box. To the right of that, we have the date, which is an automatically entered uh, date uh, based on uh, when the pass fail NA has been uh, corrected or changed or modified. And then to the far right, we have a deficiency uh, column, which uh, turns to a blue color once a deficiency has been established on this particular work order. So let's uh, have a look at uh, adding a, a pass fail NA status on, um, let's just go with the first item. And I'm just clicking off there right now. There we go. You can see there uh, pass fail NA. I'll just go with a pass. And the next one, let's just go with the NA. When we get to uh, choosing or deciding that uh, any one of these items are a fail, if I click on fail, it automatically takes us through to our deficiency layout. And a couple of these fields have been pre-filled uh, according to the uh, row that we just clicked on. And if there's any risers or anything would show up here too. Let's just add a, a quick description from the presets and just a test for our internal comments. I'll just leave the photos for now. Click done at the bottom right. And it brings us back through to our test procedure. And you can see uh, our fail has uh, been retained on that field area. And you might have noticed that the date on the far right has changed to today's date. And you see the blue link on the right. And that gives us an option to come back to that deficiency whenever we need to. Maybe we, we may have changes as we go through this. So going through here, um, the technician would then 
continue with the pass fail NA. At the moment, we haven't completed, but um, we have kind of a, a fail safe at the, at the bottom right where once the technician finishes or believes he's done, he has to click on the verify button. So if I click there right now, it's going to tell us, hey, there's still a, a number of items that you haven't gone and uh, updated the status on. So you have to do that first. So I'll click OK. And uh, let's just add a few more. I'll just go NA. And let me just uh, fast forward. The rest of them have been passed. And uh, let's move on. And let me just add a, a comment. Um, uh, I'll focus on the comments that have specific uh, entry uh, data information. So look at uh, items uh, or rows 1.6 and 1.7. It is indicating that we're looking for a PSI below or above. And I'll just click on that. And what that brings up is a link to our uh, system information. And it's looking at uh, the riser IDs that, it, that are associated with this building we do have one that's already in there and it gives us the option to choose that PSI below if I click on there it closes the window and adds that to the field which is great um, PSI above will just give us the PSI above value now if I happen to know or feel that there's not enough um, risers uh, available to choose from I would uh, I would uh, close this. Uh, I wouldn't select anything from those uh, from that one option. I would click on the the bottom left um, where it says System Info. Click on that button and choose uh, Risers and Gauges from the the options that come up here. And then I would just go and add that into the system information so it's available when I come back here. Um, it'll be another riser ID which is uh, another video I can go into more detail as to uh, adding that riser uh, information. But um, everything else, um, for the most part, is uh, filled out. Um, let's just uh, add one more comment. And as I had mentioned before, by default, you can add a comment or just a yes or no value. I'll just add a comment here just uh, some kind of information for a test. Um, so now that all the pass fail NA uh, fields have been filled out, I'll click the verify again. And you'll notice this time there's no pop-up to tell us that we haven't finished because we have finished and uh, the completed um, uh, field at the bottom right has, uh, has changed to completed. And let's uh, go back to our system or well, let's go back to our work order in this case and you'll notice now the color um, has changed from red to green which is uh, indicative uh, when uh, a test procedure has been completed. This brings us to the end of our presentation on test procedures in JetTrack fire inspection. Stay tuned for future videos in the series and we'll look at more in-depth uh, examples in different scenarios and different layouts Goodbye for now.